Hello, my name is Guion, and today I'm going to tell you a story. A true story about a man who lived in Wales over 600 years ago. A lot of people think this man is a hero. The name of this hero was Owain Glyndwr. I was born in 1359. My father was a descendant from the Princes of Powys family, and my mother, well, she came from the Dehilberth family, which meant I was a very important man, a very wealthy man, and I had plenty of money. And as a rich man, I lived in a very beautiful house called Sucharth in Glyn Dyfrdwy, an area which is very close to the border between Wales and England. I owned plenty of land, I had servants working for me, and also I would invite poets over, and that would be a great excuse for a party and a little bit of entertainment. <laughs> I had a big family, my wife, Marged, and I had 11 children, six sons and five daughters. Life was wonderful in Sakhar. But I wasn't completely happy, no. The King of England was Henry IV, a cruel and greedy king who wanted to rule Wales. And that's how things were during my time. Now, this is the border between Wales and England. We have Wales and we have England. Many areas in Wales, especially those on the border between Wales and England, were being ruled by the Marcher Lords, greedy lords, and they would be taking our land from us, collecting more rent, getting richer by the minute. And this, well, this suited the king very nicely, because King Henry, he didn't like Wales, because we were a different country, with our own language and own culture. And Henry wanted to rule Wales. And one of these marcher lords who worked for Henry was called Reginald Grey, and he lived in Rhythin. Now one day, Reginald Grey came over to Glyndyfrdwy, and he tried to take away my land from me. So I decided to see the king to complain. <clears throat> Excuse me, King Henry, but Lord Grey is trying to take my land away from me, and that's not fair. It is me who should keep the land. But it's my land. You can't just take it away from me. I don't like the Welsh. Give the land to Reg. Give Reg the land. Give the land to Reg. Give the land to Reginald Grey. I had enough. So I decided to have a meeting with the people of Wales who felt the same way as I did. My people, we've suffered far too long under the rule of King Henry and his nasty marcher lords. And it's about time for us to raise our voices. That is why I give you my word today that I, Owain Glyndwr, will fight and will battle until every castle in Wales flies the Welsh flag. And I'll be in charge of Wales, not King Henry. And you know what? People started chanting, Owain Glyndwr, the Prince of Wales. So the next thing I had to do was create an army. So I appointed a man named Rhys Githin as my captain, and a man called Madoc Ap Griffith as my personal bodyguard. Our first target was Rhythin where Reginald Grey lived. 
We arrived at Rithin during Rithin's fair, where Reginald Grey's soldiers were enjoying themselves. Therefore, the last thing they expected was a battle. We burned the town down and stole their horses, their money and their gold. After the success of Rithin, we captured other towns under the rule of the Marcher Lords. But when we arrived at Shrewsbury, King Henry kidnapped one of our men. His name was Goronwy Ap Tidir. And do you know what he did to Goronwy Ap Tidir? He cut his body into small parts and hung them along the border. His leg in Bristol. <laughs> his arm in Ludlow. Ho! <laughs> and his head in Hereford. <laughs> but we had to carry on. June 1401. And North Wales was now supporting me. I moved my army towards Ceredigion and Powys. And at the Pimlimon Mountains, we fought the Battle of Huthgen. I had around 500 soldiers, but Henry had at least double that amount. All my soldiers were all on foot. Henry's soldiers had horses, but they weren't used to the Welsh mountain terrain, and that's why they got lost. We also had one more thing to help us, which was a bow and arrow. We won the Battle of Huthgen. Welshmen from all over came forward to join me. And Henry, he was not happy. He was so angry, he created a series of laws or rules for the people of Wales. A Welsh person cannot hold a meeting unless one of the king's officers is present. <laughs> a Welsh person cannot own a castle or a grand house. <laughs> a Welsh person cannot have an important job. A Welsh person cannot own weapons unless they have a license. Hmm. A Welsh person is not allowed to welcome poets to their home. Hmm. And there we have it. King Henry's rules for Wales. But it goes without saying. I completely ignored his rules. June 1402. I won a very important battle called the Battle of Bryn Glass, a very bloody battle where almost 8,000 soldiers lost their lives. But it was a great success for me. After the success of Bryn Glass, we won numerous towns all over Wales by capturing castles in Aberystwyth, Cydwelly, Castell Newydd Emlyn and Harlech. And by 1403, I ruled Wales. And King Henry had lost control. And he was afraid. Afraid of who? Well, me, of course. Oh, I'm Glyndur, the Prince of Wales. And that is when I decided to create Wales' first ever parliament a place to create our own rules for our own country in Machynlleth, mid-Wales. It was a beautiful day, September 1404, when I led a grand procession along the streets of Machynlleth. The streets were packed with people shouting, Owain Glyndur, the Prince of Wales! My people, 
I stand before you today as the Prince of Wales outside Wales' first ever Parliament. We now live in a new Wales. A Wales that's independent from England. And that is with your support, the people of Wales. Then in May 1405, my army fought the Battle of Pullmelin in South Wales. 1,500 Welsh soldiers lost their lives, including my son, Griffith. After the huge loss of Pullmelin, people started to turn their backs on me. And one after the other, the English soldiers took back their castles. The castle of Aberystwyth, Carmarthen, Kidwelly, Newcastle Emlyn, and Carmarthen. But later on that year, 500 French soldiers sailed over to Wales to help me. You see, the King of France, Charles VI, and I became friends. And he was a very important man in my life. Dear Owen Glyndwr, the Prince of Wales, me and my soldiers will help you against the King of England on one condition, that you follow the French Church and turn your back on the Church of England. Merci beaucoup. Charles. So, I decided to have a meeting with the people of the church in Penal. And although they knew that turning their backs against the Church of England was a very dangerous thing to do, they all agreed. So I wrote a letter back to Charles. Your Majesty Charles VI, on behalf of the people of Wales, I declare that we will follow the Church of France and will refuse the King of England's religion. For Wales, I want two universities, one in the north and the other in the south. I want to create a free and independent Wales. Yours sincerely, Owain Glyndwr, the Prince of Wales. And even though I tried to create a new Wales and had the support of France, the English army was taking more of our land. And by the end of 1407, I had lost everything. I lost my army, my home, which was Harlech Castle, and my family. They took my wife and my children and imprisoned them. And I never saw them again. I had no choice but to run away. I disguised myself as a shepherd. I travelled all over Wales on my own. One day, I was looking down on Sycharth, my first home and all I could see were ruins. King Henry had burnt my home to the ground until there was nothing left. I had no choice but to disappear and nobody ever saw Owen Glyndwr after that. Do you know what? Some people think that Owen Glyndwr is still alive and he might return one day. But it's safe to say, Owen Glyndwr was a brave man, and his influence is just as strong today.